Okay, so just reviewing here, we have uh, a linear equation called y equals mx plus b. We call this equation slope intercept form because the m is our slope and the plus b is the y intercept. Not just an intercept, it's specifically where the line we're dealing with crosses the y axis. So if we look at this card that was in our card sort for slope of a line Desmos on slide seven, we're looking for, in this case, you were looking for just the slope, but I'm gonna write what the whole equation is and see if it starts to make sense to people. To write the equation for this line, I'm always gonna start with the Y and the X is gonna be there. What I'm looking for to fill in are the numbers for the X, what's in front of the X, the slope, and what's the Y intercept or what would go at the end of the equation. And in this case, this right here is the end of the equation. That's the Y intercept. Why is it the Y intercept? Because this is the Y axis. And right here is where this line or this graph crosses the y axis. What number is it crossing at? Positive two. So right now I have my equation as y is equal to something times x plus two. That something times x is the slope. We find our slope by doing rise over run from two points. My rise is two. My run is one, two, three, four. But as you can see, I can make a smaller triangle here because there's a point in between those two red points that you could see. <clears throat> and on this smaller triangle, my rise is one and my run is two. That means that with my equation, I'm gonna have a rise of one, a run of two. That means the slope is one over two X plus two. This is the equation for this line that we see here. So let's go down here and talk a little bit about what slope means. The variable we use for slope is M. Every year when I teach this, I think I'm gonna look it up and remember why we call it M and I don't really know why the, the Variable for slope is m, but it is. This is what we call slope, which we also know as a ratio of rise over run. And on a graph, we can do what I just did and literally count the rise, which is this going up and down, or the run, which is going across back and forth. That means that you could think of this visually as a ratio of the way there's a distance between two points going up and down over going back and forth. What axis goes up and down on a graph? The Y axis and what goes across on a graph? The X axis. And we often talk about these as the change in Y over the change in X. And that triangle I just wrote is a Greek symbol called a delta. And it stands for the word change. So when we say delta Y over delta X, which I'm sure looks confusing, we're just meaning the change in Y over the change in X. We're looking at the distance between these two here. So if I look at this point here, hold on, let me highlight. I wanna look at this point here. First, this point is negative two comma one. If I start at the origin, I go left two and up one to get that point. This point is two comma three. And if I'm talking about ordered pairs, ordered pairs are always X comma Y. So right now I have an ordered pair that's two comma three. 
and another ordered pair that's negative two comma one. If I'm talking about the change in Y over the change in X, that crazy delta thing I wrote down below, I want to talk about subtracting the Ys and subtracting the Xs to find the change or the distance. So if I do three minus one, I'm getting the Ys. And if I do two minus negative two, because change means the distance here, so I'm gonna subtract. And again, just to show where I'm getting these from, these are from here and these are from here. Three minus one would be two. Two minus negative two would be four because two minus negative two, I'm gonna add that. Two over four reduces to one half. And if you notice, this is the slope I got here from doing my rise over run counting. This is the slope I got here by finding the change in Y over the change in X or subtracting between two ordered pairs. The other piece of this equation is the y-intercept, and we call this the b. b in this equation equals the y-intercept, and it quite simply is just exactly where I have a line, and where does it cross the y-intercept. This is also an intercept, it's the x-intercept, and it's important for other things. But for what we're dealing with right now, we're just looking at where it crosses the y-intercept here. So if I come back to this equation again, I found the plus two because that line crosses at the two on that graph. I saved this one as well because it's a negative line. And I thought it would be interesting just to take the same things we just talked about and write the equation of this line. Y is equal to something times X plus or minus something that would be the B. Well, what's our B here? Where it's crossing that Y axis is at zero. So for my equation, I'm gonna put plus zero. What's my slope? Well, I'm noticing that this is not a positive line. This is a negative line. Thinking of slope due, that's a nice negative. So I wanna put a negative symbol here. And then I wanna find the distance between these two points and I can do it. I think the easiest way when you have a graph is just to count the rise over the run. So I'm gonna count up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to count across one, two, three, four. That means that my rise over run is equal to eight over four. It rose up eight, it ran across four. So that's my rise over run. But can eight over four be reduced? Eight over four can be reduced to two. Or if we want to make it visible, two over one. That means there's probably another point on this line that is two over and one across. Well, we already saw that point. It's right here. Our y-intercept was at zero, and that's another point on the line. Are there other points? If I go from here, can I count up two and over one? There's another point. Can I count up two and over one? There's another point. So I had my original large triangle because I was counting from the two points that already existed on the line, but there's other points we can see on the line. 
What does that mean to my equation? It's negative 2x plus 0. I would rewrite that as just negative 2x. The plus 0 doesn't need to be there because it's just 0. And if I'm adding, uh, if my line goes through the origin, that is where my b is. That's where my y-intercept is. Okay, this is a lot of information, but I want to connect it to one more idea. The famous table that we use in math so much with y or x on the left and y on the right. I'm going to erase this here just so it's not in the way of our table. So in these tables, y is our input. I'm sorry, I just said y and I'm pointing to x. x is our input and y is our output. What goes in the middle is the rule and the rule comes from the equation. In this case, it's negative 2x or negative 2x plus zero if you wanna put the whole thing there. And I can put a bunch of numbers in for the input. Let's say I, I want negative two. Let's say I want positive two. And what about four? I can rewrite this where I'm multiplying by the x. And I'm going to leave this plus zero off because it just seems like extra work to write it in all of these when we know whatever we multiply and add times zero, it's going to be the same thing. So I really am hoping that you notice what I just wrote here. This negative two ended up here. This positive two is here because they're the x. Four is here. What does that mean for my output? Well, negative two times negative two gives me a positive four. Negative two times positive two gives me a negative four. And negative two times positive four gives me a negative eight. If I add one more column to this, showing what is my X and what is my Y, well, the X is negative two and the Y is four. In this case, the X is two and the Y is negative four. And here I have four and negative eight. These ordered pairs I just created are on the line that's over here. I'm gonna erase a bunch of this just to make it really obvious, the connection that we're gonna show right now. This negative two comma four, we go down to, and I'm not seeing what I did wrong here. Oh, I'm going down, that's the problem. <laughs> if I'm gonna show this as Negative two, I'm gonna start in the middle, negative two, one, two, and I'm gonna go up positive four, one, two, three, four. And that point is the same point that we see over here in this. Then our next point is two comma negative four, where I would start again at the origin and I would go to the right two and down negative four. And this point here comes from this place here. Four and negative eight isn't gonna show up on this graph because this doesn't go down far enough to negative eight, but it would be right about here. So what we're really working on right here is that straight lines, when we're using our equations, have a lot of relationship to the actual equation, which in this case was y is equal to negative 2x. And in this case is y is equal to 1 half x plus 2. And the graphs that come from them, and they're also related to tables.